Good evening. Welcome to Expert Insights. I'm your host Raju Mandhia. Here at Expert Insights, we take external views of internal successes by foreigners, Filipinos, and people who love the Philippines. Today, uh, the day of March, and March being Women's Month, we have two lady guests who will talk about being a woman and on womanhood. One of them is a German national who has made Philippines her home for the last 25 years and has a foundation for children. She's a mother of four and her name is Annette Helbig, am I right? That's right. And our another guest is Clang Garcia. Clang Garcia calls herself a destination explorer for the Philippines. Her job, her mission in life is to bring expats into the countries and show them the beauty and the wonder of the Philippines. So ladies, welcome to Expat Insights. Thank you. Thank you. Roger. So let's start uh, by telling us a bit about yourself. Annette, you go first. Right. Um, I've lived in the Philippines for more than 25 years. All right. <coughs> I left Germany when I was 18 on a small stint in California, then ended up in the Philippines. I love it here. All right. It's also my country of choice. Um, I love the work that I'm doing here. I'm very fortunate to be able to uh, work with the people here and I'm very fortunate to be able to provide opportunities for them to improve their living standards. It's a pleasure really to be able to do that. Describe your first experience of the Philippines. <laughs> so when you landed from <laughs> Germany, a country that's so structured and so disciplined and you come to this island country, what did you feel and see? Well, it took my breath away. <laughs> <laughs> Explain, in, describe. In many it. ways, um, I mean, first was the humidity when we came out of the airport. In mm -hmm. those days, everybody was crowding around you. So in this Germany, was 1983. We're used to 1983. Mm. In Germany, we are used to personal space, right? right. People don't come very close. Right. <laughs> in Asia, um, people have a different uh, view on this, that. right? So all these people were crowding, crowding around us, and I was here with my eight-month-old baby. So I put her on my shoulders because people were all around me, around us, and we were waiting for somebody to pick us up. And um, I was overwhelmed with the uh, with so many people that um, initially, you know, it was the heat, the humidity, and so many people, and I was so young when I came, I didn't quite know what You're to still expect. young, Anna. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so young, too. So, uh, 1983 was a period of chaos for Philippines. It was. You came in not just in humidity and traffic, but you came in the middle of a revolution. Mm. Yes, uh, we arrived in October, and the re revolution happened in February. Yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. Great. Uh, Klang? Destination yes. Explorer, tell us a bit about yourself. Yes, I'm actually a late bloomer in terms of discovering the Philippines because I, I only experienced traveling around the Philippines after graduation. So I was kind of late and uh, I, but the moment I traveled from one island to another, it, I was blown away by it. So I, I thought, I, I told myself that this is something, uh, the cost, the path that I want to take is to be able to uh, share more of my country to um, other people. Mm -hmm. So I started publishing my own Philippine travel guide. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I evolved to making uh, uh, trips experiential. So I started creating uh, innovative tours with the objective of um, uh, promoting the best of the Philippines one trip at a time. So when you say late bloomer, how many years ago was that? <laughs> that was In I terms think. of your exploring the Philippines, I mean. I started probably in 1994. That's where I started ah, so the like traveling. That's a lot of time. That's about 16 yeah, years ago. Yeah. Wow. But when I was young, our, the farthest uh, destination that I've been to was Baguio and Cavite. That's all I had. I think that's <laughs> how far I've been in the Philippines, yeah. Baguio. How about you, Annette? Uh, how much have you traveled in the country? I've traveled a lot. Um, part is because of the projects we do. We, uh, we are involved in emergency relief, so we went all the way to later during the Green Sogon landslides. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I personally love to travel too. Yeah. I wish I could see more actually. Um, yeah. My goal is to do a motorbike tour all around the wow. Philippines. I want to yeah. get on my bike and yeah. see everything. Mm -hmm. wow. wow, so you want to be an independent woman. Yes. Yeah. You want to buy a Harley? <laughs> do you want to buy a Harley? Or a German but bike? No, I, 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 the, the bike I learned on was a Kawasaki Chopper. Wow. Oh, okay. So I like that one. Oh, that's a, that's nice. that's a yeah, trip that you, you must explore that. on. So uh, now we're going to talk about uh, being a woman and about women, em women empowerment in the world. No? Mm -hmm. So uh, your perspective on your successes and your life, you know, just a brief introduction on 
for me, I have never known how it is to be a woman, forgive me, <laughs> to be a woman, no? So describe it. What is life from your window? Sorry. I mean, I know half the world is made up of the other sex, but what is it, what is it like? It's, it's lovely to be a woman. It's beautiful. Yes. Yeah. yeah, you get treated very specially. You know? Yeah. Um, um, most men are very charming. Yeah. And, uh, you know, they thankfully, open thankfully. doors for you. And <laughs> I'm sorry? They open doors for you. <laughs> they bring right. you flowers. And yeah. um, I love being a woman. It uh, comes with challenges, obviously. It's not always yeah. easy to be a woman. But um, it puts us in a very special place. Yeah. We raise the next generation correct, as correct. Like the you primary are the procreators, caretaker, yeah. right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So um, it's, an, um, it's a very important task. Um, yeah. It scares me often right? Um, because with four children, you know, you want to do wow. it right. Wow, yes. wow, wow, so wow. That, that part is. But I also find that uh, the approach of a, a woman is yeah. often a little more gentle and it's very much... Um, thankfully, thankfully, if you had people you like me, we'd be <laughs> you knocking that, stuff yes. around. No? <laughs> Yeah. Um, yeah, that is one part, and um, we are looking at it from a very broad view where uh, relationships are very important too much as well as success. Mm -hmm. We want people to be happy and yeah. successful, so I think that's kind of... Um, Not just people, I think the whole world. So that's an course. assignment that you have in life as a woman. Yeah. Flang, what's your take on this? Well, women, we have our own uh, power. Power, power to create a difference All right. while at the same time we we can play with the privileges that we know we are entitled to yeah so what are the privileges can you name a few i need to know <laughs> or at least i need to be aware of them <laughs> being a traveler sometimes i get late on the plane but you know some level of charm can work for you to get through ah, uh, so things like that <laughs> okay that's one that's a privilege so late coming is okay for women you, oh, you have to have a great excuse. smile to yeah. excuse yeah. late coming. And <laughs> charm comes naturally with women, so that's our power oh, without so even sorry you knowing. For the men. <laughs> <laughs> that's our silent power. All right. Yeah. And uh, even with work, you know, sometimes you can get things your way by just being a woman, yeah. um, focusing on your power, and uh, just knowing what's your uh, inner strength. Wow, mm -hmm. I, I always believe that the reason there has been this women's liberation movement is because women cannot employ their power. They cannot get this privilege. They feel as if they are the minority. You know? So they feel explored. I think the whole issue is that. And here you are saying that you can use that power and yeah. get things your way. You have to know said. that and you have to acknowledge it. So it's not a generally sweeping statement that <laughs> women have been exploited upon. Some women can be exploited, some can <laughs> really exploit others. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> so you have to know your uh, power and then uh, work around it. Ah, okay. I remember there's this one saying uh, by Margaret Thatcher. She said something like, in politics, if you want something said, ask the men. But if you want to get something done, ask the women. Say that again, if, if, if in <laughs> politics you want something said, ask, ask the, the guys, ask yes. the guys. And if you want something done, ask the, the ladies. Women. Yes. Whoa, whoa. <laughs> you, man. <laughs> well, I hope it's not about exploiting each oh, other. Yeah. You yeah. know, mm, neither right. the women should exploit the Correct. men or vice versa. Yeah. Right. Mm. Yeah. But it's actually, you know, making use um, of the, the special talents. And Correct. Uh, a woman has um, a different way of, of looking at things, and that is what makes her special. Yeah. So I think when women... Um, strive for equality then yeah. they don't strive for being the same as a man mm -hmm. they yeah. just strive for having respect, the same worth respect recognition love, for what they do fairness. so we don't want to change we don't right, want to right. be right. men we, we, thank we, you. we want thank to you. remain thank female you. Yeah. you know you've got only half the world we don't have the rest <laughs> of it right yes but of course you know we would like to have um, um, equal rights and worth there mm. there is uh, i think the areas where women are fighting for Correct. All right, all right. Correct. Uh, we are coming to a break right now. Mm -hmm. This is for the people who pay for this show. We'll come back mm -hmm. and look at the work you do. You run an outreach program for children and you run a, a real tourist business company, for yeah. tourism. Yeah. So we'll come and talk about that and how you as women manage and grow that. So thank you for watching Expand Insights. This, we'll take a break and we'll come back with Annette and Clang Garcia. Stay with us. Welcome back to Expert Insights. We are still talking with Annette and Clang. We are talking on women and womanhood. 
and now we'll find out from Clang Garcia what she does for this country and how she lets foreigners explore and love this country much more than they already do. Clang, tell me about this lovely business that you have created and you're running. All right. So it's important for every person to know what is your purpose in life. For me, I have already uh, taken the path of Philippine tourism. Yeah. This is the cause that I want to carry. 16 years of it. Yeah. Yes, 16 yeah. years of it. And uh, basically, I want to address to every uh, market possible. Yeah. And uh, I remember one time we had this travel photography workshop with the top Philippine photographer in Boracay. Yeah. And we had uh, uh, two expat ladies who joined the trip. And I told them, it's Mother's Day. How come you're here? And they told me, are you kidding us? This is the best trip that we've ever done for ourselves. This is the treat that we can give to ourselves. So, well, basically, they said that sometimes every person just needs a break. And um, that's uh, actually what we give them. And we create some uh, incentivized trips uh, bundled with uh, activities. Mm -hmm. Because what we want to happen is we, uh, for you to unplug your creative block and connect to your Tell inner self. Tell me about it. Tell <laughs> me about it. Connect to your inner self. Then right. you will, every time you visit a destination, you'll go back home as a different person again. Oh, mm. so you get you get transformed after a trip. Yes, Fantastic. so it's important to invest. What are the in destinations that? that you go to, and mm. other tour operators do not go to? Well, it depends on my mood. On um, your mood, not on, on my the mood, and then the mood of the customers also. So normally, mm. I ask them what are their points of interest, and some, and then we make a recommendation based on that. So my top personal favorites and the one where we get um, high um, um, bookings also is basically Batanes. Hmm? This is not far. It's, uh, yeah, uh, yes, like yeah. In the, it's in the northern thing because it's really charming. It has its mm. agricultural charm, rolling hills and yeah. all that. And then Palawan because yeah. of this eco-adventure charm. Yeah. And then for other ladies, uh, they want those uh, spa and wellness escape. Ladies? Yes. So you have Sometimes more Sometimes they cut. just bond. <laughs> More lady customers than men? Uh, yes, yes. But sometimes we also do get a lot of family travel oh. uh, market. Have you ever done Batanes or Pala Palawan, is it? Have you done all of them? Have you done all of them? Not with your tours. I did one of your yeah. tours, but that was me. Oh, you've done one of her tours? Yes. For the jeepney tours. Oh, oh So okay. that one is um, Jumbo Jeepney. Yeah. It's, uh, for me, I consider it as a tourism breakthrough because we're able to, pr to provide daily city tours. To How many uh, Jumbo Jeepneys do you we have? We have three. This is a jeepney that's slightly bigger than the regular jeepney. Yes, it's air conditioned. So it's like a mini bus or a mini yes, mini bus. I've correct. seen one of those. This yes. is the old one in the no. 70s and 80s used to have those jeepneys. Or you had this made specially? Yeah, we had it custom made just mm. for us. Mm. It's Sarau. air conditioned. Sarau? Yeah, uh, yes. Mm. Mm. Okay, I need to ask you something about mm. jeepneys. You know, one time I had some guests from New York. A lady, a Jewish lady from New York, Brooklyn and a Chinese lady, and I was touring them around the Philippines, they were my customers. And uh, these are the questions they ask me and I ask you as a foreigner, is how does one know where does jeepney stop? How do you know, is there a jeepney stops? You just flag them down. Yeah. They or stop you just everywhere. flag they, them yeah. down. They can how, stop anywhere. <laughs> how do they go from one place to another? How do you know whether they're going from New York to Florida or Florida to LA? How do you know that? Well, in the Philippines, there will always be people on the street that you can always ask, but you have to know what is your itinerary. Oh, so for example, if I want to go to Fort Bonifacio, I just stand anywhere and say I want to go to Fort Bonifacio, or is there a route map or something? You have to know the route. You have to I know have to I know have the yes, route? Yes. I was, uh, well, for the first y three years in the Philippines, yeah. um, we only had money for jeepney and tricycle. So I, I'm wow. very proficient in traveling <laughs> by okay. jeepney and tricycle. Yeah. So the jeepneys have very specific routes, okay. and they are are written on the jeepneys. Okay, okay. Oh, they're written on the jeepneys? Yes. yes. They're the beginning and the end, and they just mm. go back and forth. Yes. Okay, okay. So That's you have right. to find the point where the next jeepney will... Oh, so you have to find the starting point, ending yes. point, and stand in between mm. somewhere. Right. Mm. And then and you can stop it you anywhere. You flag them down. Uh, how, if you want to get down, uh, how do you know? For you example, if you don't know where you're going and... Yeah, you knock. You knock on the ceiling and you say... Oh, you knock on the ceiling, all right. Pakipara. Okay. Pakipara. <laughs> Pakipara. <laughs> and it stops here. It will stop. Uh, how much do you pay? It's about eight. It depends on the route, yeah. About eight, eight pesos. Yeah. Who figures that out? Is there a, like a It depends price, on the price? fuel cost. <laughs> no, no, I mean, <laughs> who moment. figures that out? Not I the think the government uh, regulates yeah, it's, the cost. It's government no, but when you get inside and I say, I want to go to Fort Bonifacio. Then you ask uh, how yeah. much. 
How you ask who? The driver. The driver. The oh, driver isn't he driving the at the same time? Mm -mm, and he's the one collecting the money at the same time. Oh, so he's multitasking. Yeah. Yes. Multitasking. So you and knock on the door and you get down and get yeah. up. And so you, you can give stop the money anyway. to any passenger and yeah. you just say where are you going and the passenger will hand it over to the driver oh, who then beautiful. gives back the I've been change. in this country for 29 years and I've never experienced that it's thing. Amazing. Why? And there's no. always room in a jeepney, you know. You just well, that's the question I'm coming to. That's yeah. the question I'm coming to. In the jeepney, uh, people just get in, mm -hmm. yeah? Yes. And people keep getting inside. Mm -hmm. yes. Is that true? Yes. yes. The question I'm going to ask you is why do people sit so close to each other in jeepneys? What's the agenda there? Because you only have very limited space and the driver wants to maximize their profit. Mm -hmm. So they don't mind sitting so close to each other, getting so much into personal mm -hmm. space. You didn't mind it as a foreigner when you came here? Uh, it took me a little time to get used to, but yeah. you know, and then it's the way it is. So yeah. you just live with it. But what I found fascinating is the jeepney appears to be full yeah. and you have another passenger coming in. You can in always put somebody in. And somehow in. he just wiggles in and yes. he, oh, oh, he finds right. the room. I think that's what keeps Filipinos small and trim yes, because I they keep so. wiggling <laughs> inside Jeep. <laughs> All right, and at now you run an outreach program for yes. Filipino kids and I really applaud that. You know? So can you tell us how you started and what made you start? What, what about being a woman made you decide and do this? Um, I've always had this passion that I wanted to have an impact with what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, I want to live my life with a purpose. Okay. And I found my purpose as being able looking to after kids. Looking after kids, yeah. having four children. Yeah. You know, you look at what you want for your own children. You mm -hmm. want a safe home. You want food. You want yeah. medicine yeah. if they get sick. You want good education so they can Correct. have an impact. Correct. Good moral values. Correct. Right. That's what you want for your kids, and yeah. that's basically what everybody wants. Well, every child in the world wants that. Yes. Yeah. It's uh, that's yeah so universal. How did Springboard get started? What was it? I mean, what was the day you woke up, had your cup of German coffee and I said, I'm going to start Springboard? <laughs> was it you or was it you and somebody else with you? I wrote a book. Andrew. Oh, okay. I wrote a book called Dignity and Courage. Right. Mm. And uh, the book uh, is black and white photography that predicts children living in very simple circumstances. Mm. It shows their courage. You know, do you a have a sample of it? I do. I do have a sample. Uh, we'll get a sample um, of it. Anyway, continue. Yeah. And uh, yeah. it's with poetry. So I wrote all the poems to right. all the black and white um, photographs. Wow. Yeah. That becomes very powerful. So yeah. the idea was to raise awareness and to make uh, people just out of themselves do yeah. something good for them. Yeah. Right? But then, of course, the book sales would create money. And I wanted to do something that. Uh, yeah. I could make sure that the money really helps the children. So, so this is the book. This is the book. Very right? nice this idea. Is the book. It's and called Dignity nice. okay. and Courage. Can you flip a few pages through it? Of course. And you got to hold it to the camera so the camera, because the camera cannot bend. Yeah. Is that available in bookstores? Up, yeah? um, no, actually, I only have about uh, 200 copies left. Which so I this was a creative that. output from you, yes. creating the book? It was. Um, it was something that I had in mind for more than 20 years. Yeah. Um, when I first really was exposed to extreme poverty and mm. I wanted to create something that was... This um, is after powerful. 1983 here in this country. This was the done in this country. Yes, I did this about uh, 10 years ago. Like to 1990s, late 90s? Um, yes, it was. Now actually it was more in the early 2000s. Oh, so just right? 10 years ago. And so yeah. Springboard came right after the book. Yes. Because I said I wanted to make sure that uh, the, the money that is raised from that goes towards children yeah. and goes to help them. Yeah. So I created Springboard as an yeah. entity. And Springboard remained, uh, our expertise is actually um, sourcing incredibly well-run projects in the Philippines. So we support Say that local incre in incredibly what? successful projects. Uh, projects yeah. that are run in the Philippines already. So yeah. rather than creating something new, we look for around only, for, for children. children's care we looked, and Yeah, we look for foundations yeah. that basically have the same vision that we do, which yeah. is nurturing environments for children. So right. we improve the health, the nutrition, the education, right. yeah. we help in emergency relief. And we work together with more than 60 organizations in the Philippines right. where we um, raise funds for them. So we incorporate the You raise funds for the business organizations or just for Springboard? We raise the, f uh, Springboard raises the funds yeah. and then we give it to local organizations oh, that the run the programs. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. 
So we, we try to engage the uh, expert community mm -hmm. and corporations because we are very successful finding projects that have very low cost but yeah. very high impact. Right, for children so only, just, for, for just children. specifically for Except children. Except for when there's emergencies, then we, we do help the families because All right. it, it's part, it's, it's part. a system, yeah. It's part of what mm -hmm. the children need. Yeah, so really, this is uh, what we're looking out for. This yeah. year, we've um, already done the repairs of more than 200 houses that were not able to um, be repaired after Ondoy because mm -hmm. people have suffered so much. So they've and been. This was in Metro Manila area. This or was outside? in, uh, um, yeah, some part of Metro Manila, and then also around Laguna. Mm -hmm. Laguna de Bay mm -hmm. and other projects are just a simple one for example for education children when they suffer malnutrition have yeah. oftentimes problem with their eyesight right like right. I do vitamin A mm. yeah like yeah. you were saying before like uh, you, uh, you know I'm not can. suffering from malnutrition <laughs> it's, just <laughs> it's, just <laughs> it's just lack of exercise I think yeah, yeah. mine is I think old <laughs> age as well <laughs> yeah. right, right. and you know if you can't read yeah then how can you study True. I mean, I, I say this is a special gift, you know. Mm. Yes. Just so the, the we yeah. are able with the uh, to provide prescription glasses for elementary <laughs> school children. We've done more than, I think, already 600 in this year alone. Provided uh, prescription high glasses, glasses for so 600 kids. Yes. There's like a doctor who goes and checks them, and then, and it's it's very very cheap. You know, it costs us about 330 pesos, per and you make per per eyeglass. Right. And you basically change um, the life of this child. It's one of my favorite projects because you put the eyeglasses on the children's and faces. Bang, he says, and you go my like life is different. Yeah, yeah and Melina, and he goes Malina like, Ooh. So you speak a little Tagalog to these uh -oh. kids. So you pick this up, Pedena. <laughs> example, example. Besides Pedena. Ikinagagala um, kitang makilala. Say that slowly. Wow. I don't know Tagalog. <laughs> I'm very happy to meet you. Say that. Uh, is that the right? Yes, that's can right. You, Even the pronunciation is uh, very Tagalog. Can you say it again for my slow ear? Ikinagagala kitang Makilala. Yeah. Whoa. So that Very means nice. I'm happy to meet you. Yes, yeah. So I'm like giggling because I have met you. <laughs> Kinagagala kita. Thank you. Wonderful. Yeah. Uh, so besides that project, now that special project that you did, mm -hmm. who funded it? You were the medium and this was your reach out. Yeah, you yes. changed the lives of these 600 kids. So how did you arrange the funds from a certain uh, source? Well, we promote it through our websites, we right. have newsletters, mm -hmm. and uh, this was actually our Christmas fundraiser. So we approached the uh, corporations which are part of our yeah. support group and also um, individuals yeah. to um, donate towards it. Yeah. So we had uh, DSM Nutritional Products yeah. who um, gave a large yeah. budget for this. Yeah. We had... Uh, who? DSM? Yeah, DSM Nutritional Products. Don't know that, um, yeah. It's a Dutch company. Right. And um, we had local women's groups who yeah. have, um, participated yeah. so we just let people know this is yeah. available yeah. and this is you know for very little yeah. you, you make it possible for yeah. a child to finish yeah. their education yeah, yeah. and uh, I, I have two that. questions for you even before I forget them no the first question is give me a global picture of what's happening to children across the world I mean you know many years ago uh, there was this song about we should look after children and there was child labor but can you create a global picture on how the life of children are children is improving across the world or it's getting worse what is your current opinion of children across the world uh, we're looking at the whole world we're so looking at the globe that yeah. Is, uh, yeah that's Africa South America mm -hmm. You're looking at many, many different regions here. Yeah. What I find is uh, through the help of the internet and yeah. also, you know, uh, television being available in, in even the deepest provinces in the countries, people are not taking wrong government sitting down. They're rising up. You right, see that right, in right. Um, okay. you know, Libya. The community you know, is speaking Egypt, up. Yeah. The community says, like, it's enough is enough. We can see this can be yeah. better. Yeah, yeah. So I can see Just that. Just like they're doing for the environment and the ecology, which, of course, yes. Klang is part of. So yeah. you can see people are fighting for it. Yeah. And um, governments have to prove that right. at least they are sincere yeah. in the goal towards improving the living right. standards right. Yeah. of yeah. everybody yeah. and accessibility yeah. to Correct. things like education. Mm -hmm medicines mm -hmm. right so there there is a move towards it but yeah. um, population growth were, uh, grows very quickly right that's a challenge that's hard to overcome yes yeah. and finding the balance of uh, improving the situations while yeah. you have a rising number yeah. of children to look after will remain yeah. a challenge yeah food security is a big issue 
as yeah. well worldwide. And uh, we, we see... In, in the last 10 years, since the Millennium Goals were declared, you know, and you've been actively participating in the welfare of kids, what do you think life has changed a bit? Has there been some improvements or there is space for improvement? There's definitely space for improvement, but yeah. there have uh, improvements have been made. So changes also here in the yeah. Philippines. I have to say I applaud them for a lot of their programs which they are pushing through now. Right. Yeah. One being um, high school degree having only yeah. 10 years, yeah. which is internationally <coughs> not competitive. So yeah. you can't have an entire yeah. nation that cannot achieve an internationally accepted high school. So mm. they're, mov they're moving towards mm. implementing that. And yeah. you have to applaud them for that. That is a big step towards yeah. uh, national health coverage. Yeah. So I have to stay with the Philippines because I'm not familiar with all the situations the around the world. The world. Mm. But here uh, there's um, a movement towards um, national health coverage. In Philippines. In the in Philippines. Philippines. Yeah. So of course there's lots of room for improvement but we, we are seeing that yeah. there is a move towards it yeah. so that is good yeah. to see let me let me ask this of clang no clang mm -hmm. uh, actually i've been in this country for 29 years and of course i speak a little bit of tagalog i wrote the jeeps you know i did the knock knock did on the jeeps so <laughs> i'm just kidding you uh in my experience i come from a poorer country than philippines i come from india where the streets were filled with beg beggars in my childhood and for me that was a fact of life when i moved outside of india life mm -hmm. changed for me in those days, when I came to the Philippines, there were some people on the street. There were some people who knocked on your doors. Today, I feel that mm. they have the numbers have increased yes, on the streets. Right. A little girls knocked on your door. Mm. Before, they would sell some pagitas. Mm. Now, they just knock and put out a palm. Correct. Yeah, in fact, it just happened to me a minute ago before I came in, and it breaks my heart. Mm. Yeah? Now, do you think that this, one, this is an uh, effort by a certain group with a... Uh, personal agenda or this is just natural causes? What is your opinion on kids? Yeah. Kids on the streets. <coughs> In the Philippines. Yeah. Clang, yeah. Your, your personal point of view. Well, for me, normally I, I pack sky flakes and that's the one I give them instead of money. Right. Because yeah. uh, one time a good friend of mine told me that uh, yeah. she saw uh, a jeepney bringing down all the kids in so the street and then yeah. they're being collected at the end of the yeah, day yeah, so yeah. there's like a bigger force and you think there's this. a professional group yes. or several groups yes. who is a syndicate kind of behind it's a mix a there fact. can be and then there are some which is just natural, just natural. yeah mm. but yeah i would find it unnatural for a filipino child to go on an intersection to ask for money um, that doesn't appear to be a Filipino. Mm -hmm. The, ki the right. nature right. of the child, you yes. mean? Yeah, because I they would work, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I think they yeah. would try and look for help. Yeah. Because they can ask, right. or they could go to family. Because the whole Philippines, actually, yes. the story that I was telling about the jeepneys, Filipinos regard each other as family, and the correct. fact that somebody can go on the street is against the nature correct. of the whole. Yes. Community, and Filipinos no? by nature are shy, don't really ask for help. Right, exactly. Right, right. Mm. That's okay. why I would doubt that this is yeah. a natural, uh, 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 it's natural not a, yeah. occurrence. We need to take a break. Okay. Yeah, we're <laughs> going good on this kid stuff. We'll come back to you and womanhood. Uh, we'll take a one minute break and come back. We're still right. with uh, Annette and Klein. We're talking about woman, women and womanhood. So stay with us. I'm Raj Jumant here. And coming back. <laughs> Good evening. Welcome back to Expand Insights. I'm your host, Raju Mandi, and we're still talking to Miss Annette and Miss Klangarsha. We're talking about children in the year of the woman. No? So, uh, Annette, this thing touched me. The fact that you said that it's not in the nature of the Filipino child to beg. It's not in the nature of the Filipino, you know, open, close, uh, commas. Now, what's your take on that? You, That's you, true. You've grown yeah. up in this country yeah. and you take uh, expats around. Yes. Filipinos are shy by nature. They're yeah. not the one who would ask for help. Yeah. That's why my grandfather uh, used to tell me that if someone asks for help, just give it to them because it's not easy to ask for help. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you think that there is some kind of a syndicate that makes this a business? Yes. Rather sad, than being a natural it but it's true. outcome of the economics mm -hmm. or social growth. There is a... Uh, uh, effort made by some group. Um, I can't really comment on that, but uh, it's actually you know it's it's a really small group when you consider how many millions live in the Philippines right. and how many children you yeah. see. Yeah. Um, but coming back to you, you know, um, when somebody asks you for help, give it because it's hard to ask. ask. Yeah. There is uh, a problem of dignity when you're in charity. Yeah. 
you don't just want to give a dole out. Yeah. Mm. People want to be able to respect themselves. They Correct. want to still feel yes. in charge. And yeah. that is a very fine line you walk mm. yeah. when you're engaged in charity. Right. You have to empower people, mm. not make yeah. them feel like I'm helping you because yeah. you can't. Yeah. Mm. And that's an issue that we always take up and, mm. and think about how can we make mm. people yeah. improve their lives yeah. when they are in mm. charge, mm. not us. Yeah, I was at the CSR forum a couple of years ago, and there were groups who were helping the visually challenged yeah. people. And there were talks about helping the visually challenged community. And one of the leaders of the visually challenged community stood up and spoke, and he said, you know, you don't really have to make an effort to help us. You really don't have to make an effort, and you don't have to make announcements about it. And that was so touching because he said, don't make it such a big thing, you know, we're fine. And that, uh, that is a similar situation with everyone who's challenged. So that was very touching for me. Yeah. Coming back to kids, you know, uh, besides food, uh, education and nourishment, is there something else that you think should be given or made uh, available for kids like play or uh, exploration of the world? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, children need to play. Yeah. Children need to develop their talents, sports yeah. and yeah. music yeah. and arts. Yeah. And a very important issue is that children need to develop their self-esteem. Yeah. As you said, Filipinos by nature are shy. Right. And uh, oftentimes their self-esteem is low, which is wh the, where the shyness comes from. Yeah. So um, that has to be developed, that yeah. these children feel yeah. more secure about themselves yeah. and then they will thrive. We have one program for scholars. The first time I saw these young scholars, 12 right. years old, and they yeah. are um, from uh, financially challenged families, but yeah. very bright. Yeah. I thought, gosh, these little kids, you know, how can they do this? They were so small. Yeah. And uh, I saw them four years later, yeah. five years later, we had, it's a five year program, yeah. when they finished and these were children who yeah. believed in themselves. Mm -hmm. They had grown up during that time, they had matured, yeah. and yeah. they were like out there. We do it, uh, with we are looking for scholars uh, at the moment for, for donors for scholars because yeah. it's a new school year. Yeah. And it's a fantastic program. Yeah. So there is a big um, area where we have to work is that self esteem, that belief in themselves. That and that they comes can. through play and interaction and that is group very dynamics. Important yeah. Because if, you know, if they're struggling in so many areas, but yeah. yet they're a good painter. Yeah. That is something where they can build up their yeah. self-esteem yeah. or they're a good football player or, you know, these are important issues. Fabulous. Musicians, so, uh, they're so, uh, such good musicians mm -hmm. in the film. We will announce your website, which is, if I'm not mistaken, is www.springboard.org. No, Springboard Dash Foundation. Dash dot Foundation. Dot dot org. Do org. Okay. Yeah, Clang, uh, give us a little insight on your efforts being a tourism destination explorer mm. for tourism uh, what kind of larger economic impact are you creating for the country mm. especially coming from the window of tourism how Correct. does it help and how will it eventually help children in the long run if it can mm -hmm. Actually, apart from the joys of travel, if you look at it, tourism helps create economic right, activity. Right. In the Philippines, um, our inbound uh, tourist traffic is about uh, 3 million. And out of the 3 million tourists who visited the country, we help uh, generate about 3 billion US dollars worth of tourism receipts, spend, yeah. spending on hotels, restaurants, and all that. And, uh, and out of the 3 million tourists, we help create an employment for 3 million people. So every tourist that uh, goes into the country helps create one job. So tourism helps uh, generate jobs and it provides dignity to people. Because in tourism, there will be employment for the, for the drivers, for the mm -hmm. farmers. There will be demand if you keep on dining in a restaurant. So there will be so tea one, for the one, bellboys. One, one visitor to this country who spends, say, $1,000. Yeah, for one visit to mm -hmm. the Philippines, or maybe yes. more. A thousand mm -hmm. should be an average? Right. Yes, should be an average? yes, yes. So that $1,000 goes to one Filipino. Yes. At least that's his gross income for the year, or at least mm -hmm. it benefits him in some way, not exactly. Correct, the, correct. Which is uh, not uh, the per capita, mm -hmm. lower than the per capita, but mm -hmm. if you would to, were to increase correct. the number of tourists, it'll have mm -hmm. a direct impact. Yes, and uh, apart from the foreign, of course, there's domestic tourism. So. Uh, what I'm campaigning for is that for the local government to, fo to make the, the tourism also as a top national yeah. priority yeah. because it can help reverse migration so Filipinos doesn't have to leave the country just yeah. to have a job and leave their children and mm -hmm. all that. 
You you recently won an award, mm. and I heard so much about it. And would you like to share <laughs> what was that? What is what is it that you did that you got the limelight to yourself? What was it? Uh, all right, the Rotary Manila. It's a uh, it's an institutional organization. They mm -hmm. um, it's an organization that uh, helps towards nation building, yeah. believes in service yeah. and also. So they created that segment on tourism yeah. awards, yeah. Um, basically for personalities who made an exceptional contribution in the tourism industry. So I'm privileged to be uh, and awarded. And you're a director or a president or a chairman of the oh. PTA? Uh, of Filtoa. It's Filtoa. a Philippine okay. Tour Operators Association. Mm -hmm. Okay. Great. You ladies do uh, wonderful things for this country. You mm -hmm. do wonderful things for the whole world. You work on the kids and you work for foreigners and the Filipinos. You know? uh, bring this back to being a woman. You, would you think that a man in your place wouldn't do as good? <laughs> he would do. Uh, they would differently. kill me. The, the yeah. They would do differently. I'm not saying they yeah. would. They wouldn't be able to do the job, or it would do it, you know, less and yeah, less. less but, or, uh, but they would do it differently because right, uh, right. they probably have a little different approach. Mm. Yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. So uh, we do need you. We do need the four billion women, <laughs> on Earth, right? Uh, to sense give it a different do. perspective, <laughs> to provide value, nourishment, yeah. and warmth and coziness. No, that's yeah. really important. And to be able to see that it's not in the nature of the child to beg. That's an amazing insight. How about you, man? What's your take on this? We can never compete with men because we are unique in our own nature. Yeah. So we just have to harmonize. Okay, great. We are coming to an end, to end of this show. If there's something that I have not asked you yet, would you like to share? You have 30 seconds, and that's your camera. So, Klein, you go first. Okay, well, basically, I'll just promote my website, uh, www.jeepneeters.com, and our hotline is 9946636. So, if you have guests uh, visiting the Philippines or you just want to explore, we have daily city tours running. So, Great. call us. Great. How about you, ma'am? Um, for our Springboard Foundation, we have currently we're looking for uh, donors for our scholarship program because the new school year starts. Just look for Springboard Foundation, like jump off Springboard in the in Google, and you'll find us, and you'll find uh, ways how yeah. to contact us yeah. there. And any companies that want uh, to use us for their CSR work, contact us. We'd love to help you out. We have fantastic projects for you to choose from. And on my behalf, from on behalf of the women on earth, and this is coming from the website of Annette over here, I'll read Emily Dickinson. This is for kids and ki women all across the world. It says here, if I can stop one heart from breaking, I shall not live in vain. If I can ease one life the aching, or cool one pain, or help one fainting robin unto his nest again, I shall not live in vain. Emily Dickinson on behalf of women across wow. the world. So thank Powerful. you for being on this show and thank, thank you, you for thank sharing you. your wonderful feminine insights and Godspeed and good luck with what you do. And if you ever leave the earth, this is what Sylvester Stallone once said, if women were to leave the earth, he'd be the first one to follow. <laughs> I'd, I'd be the second be one the to second go one. right <laughs> after him. So we'll give you a song for womanhood and thank you for being on Expand Thank Insights. you so much. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you for watching Expat Insights. I'm your host, Raju Mandian, and we leave you with a video clip on womanhood. Good night and mabuhay. Honestly, sometimes I wish I were a woman. Oh yes, I really do. Because as long as you're a woman, you have the capacity to control the universe. I dedicate this song to all the mothers, sisters, daughters and wives to all of you